you can testify that God has been good. He woke you up this morning. He allowed us to have a meal. He allowed us to be here. No, and no matter what the week was like, no matter what we did, we are alive and well this morning. Can I get a witness? This morning our sermon is going to come out of, we're going to go to a theme. And we're going to go to Luke's. But what I like about this here is that no matter what you're going through, Paul and Silas and Timothy was telling the church of Athenian in God the Father, grace among you and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ. In other words, we see what you're doing and it's good. And we want to encourage you to keep up the good work. We want you to know that God is with you and we're with you. And we want you to know that we appreciate what you're doing, amen? Well, therefore, we also pray for you that our God will count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all good pleasures of his goodness and the work of faith with power, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and ye in him according to the grace of our God, Jesus Christ. In other words, I'm trying to do the will of God. And I want it to be said that I did the best that I could do. I wanted God to be able to use me the way he wants me to be used. Can I get a witness? I thank God for this opportunity to be a servant. I thank God for what he has done, how he has lifted me up, how he has lifted you up, even though you may not feel lifted up, even though you may not feel secure, even though you may not Feel that your faith is where it should be with God. I come by to tell you this morning, if you get into this word and you pray to God and ask God for strength, he will give you what you need. Can I get a witness? Over here in Luke, it talks about a man who had plenty of wealth. And they talked about Jesus because Jesus told this man, I want to come to your house. Well, I want Jesus to come to my house. I want him to come to your house. Why? Because we just like this man here. We're a sinner. God has blessed us tremendously. This man recognized the fact that Jesus wanted to come and sit at his house, at his table. And this man realized that he had done wrong. By God being in his presence, you see, God can come into your heart and you will make things right with people. Amen? As you see here, Dr. Wright, he know he had took from the poor. He know he had took higher taxes than most than what he should have. He know he had cheated some people. 
But being in the presence of Almighty God, salvation showed. He told God, said, Lord, if I cheat anyone, I'll give it back tenfold. And if what I got, I'll give it to the poor. You see, this is what he did just by being in the presence of Almighty God. Amen? You see, Sometimes it takes God to come in your life. It takes you to meet God in order to make a change in your life. Can I get a witness? Dr. Wright heard about Jesus. And he said, I want to see this man, but I'm just a little too short. <laughs> so I'm going to climb up this sycamore tree. Now, I wonder if he knew that on this day he'll be giving his fortune away. I want to know, did he know that once he got met God and talked to Jesus, that he was going to turn his life around? You see, that's what I want you to know this morning. When you find Jesus in, and he comes into your life, and if he invites himself into your home, you're going to make a change because when Jesus come in, there's all kind of power moves around. And the things that you used to do, you don't want to do no more. That's when Jesus come in. This morning, will you let Jesus in your heart? Will you let him in your house? Will you let him shine in your heart, that he may be able to make a, bring about a change in your life this morning. It's time for a change in our lives. In a few more days, we're going to be changing up the guard. In other words, we're going to be electing a new president. And we're looking at several things that can happen. It can be history in the making, first female president, self made millionaire, president. But only God knows what the outcome is going to be. But I assure you that. God will put the right person there and I just hope that God be with them and they are with God. Don't just walk to walk and talk to talk. You need to walk to walk and walk with God too. Amen? Maybe that's what our government needs. More men of God, more women of God in the White House. Not just for a moment, not just for a day, but for the whole duration. Heavenly Father, we just want you to know that we can't do anything without you. Paul and Silas tell about the church and how they pray for us. Jesus showed a sinner that I'm coming to stay at your house and turn this man's life around. Salvation. He gave his life to God. In other words, what he had taken, he gave to the poor. That's what God wanted us to do. Or with Psalms, this is what righteous are thou, O God, O Lord, the upright thy judgment, thy testimony, 
that there has commanded are righteous and very faithful. My zest has consumed me because my enemy has forgotten thy word. Thy word is very pure, therefore thy servant love it. This morning, Lord, I need you to touch me this morning. I give thanks and praise to you, Lord, because I'm going through something that I've never been through before. And this morning, Lord, we ask you to come in. No matter what the situation or the outcome will be, Lord God, we look to you for favor. You see, that's what God gives us, favor. He shows up, and he's right on time. Lord, we need you to show up this morning. Show up, show out. We need you to come by here this morning, Lord. Here at Victory Ecumenal on Pope Street. We need you to stop by here, Lord, and leave a blessing. Bless our founders, our other bishops, church leaders, our members. Lord, we need you to stop here and take a look in on us. Lord, I need you to take a stop in and look on me. Lord God, I need you to touch me. And whatever in me, Lord, that don't hold the beat of Lord, I ask you to remove it in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I come by here to tell you that I need you. We need you, Lord. We need you in a mighty way here on Pope Street. A lot of us are going through some things we don't want to talk about. But I come by here to tell you, if you don't talk to a church member or another minister, talk to Jesus. Tell him what's going on in your life. Tell him what you're in need of. Leave your burdens at the altar. Ask Jesus, Lord, I repent from anything I may have done wrong today. And Lord God, I ask you to come into the house. Come into our lives, Lord God. Touch us, Lord God, in a mighty way. You see, that's what God did his Zacharias here. Zacharias was so curious on seeing Jesus, and he did not realize that there was going to be a transformation in his life. Can I get a witness? The transformation was that God seen him. God already knew who he was, already knew his name. And he told him, Zacharias, come down at the tree. I must go to your house today. And Zacharias said, my house? Yes, your house. I want you to know this morning, when Jesus comes into your life, he will bring about a transformation. This morning, we are all in need of a transformation. All of us need some type of change in our life, in our lifestyle, or in how we live. All of us need a change in our life of who we are around. Whether relationship, marriage, or just hanging out. You see, we're asking God to bring about a transformation in our lives this morning. I'm asking God to come into my life and bring about a transformation this morning. 
and we ask him to come in your heart and in your life to help you make a transformation. Whatever is not of God, whatever there is a change that needs to be done in your house or in your life, today is a day of doing it. Today is a day of asking God for forgiveness. Today is a day of repentance. Every day is a day of repentance because we sin and sometimes we know we don't sin or we don't recognize that we're sinning. It sometimes can be just a thought off the top of your head. Sometimes it could just be what you say to other people. But that's where I come to tell you we're all sinners and the lip going to slip. Every day is not going to be a good day. There's going to be something that's going to upset you. But we ask God for a transformation. We ask God to come into our lives, help us to do the right thing. We ask God to help us on our job, whether we drive a taxi cab, whether we work for a company, or whether we go to the daily labor. You see, no matter what you do for a living, you still need to include God. Amen? You still need to let God know, Lord, I need you. I, I can't do it all by myself. I come by to tell you, you can't do it all by yourself. You need to put Jesus in your life. Keep him at the head, not at the middle and not at the bottom. Let Jesus be the head of your household. Let Jesus be the head of your job. In other words, let Jesus be head of your life. Amen? We're coming to the end of our sermon. We want us all to stand. And I want you to repeat after me. And those of you who are hearing this broadcast, wherever you may be, put your hand on your TV, your radio, or whatever. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, I am a sinner. But Lord, I know that you died upon the cross and you arose on the third day. And you now sit at the right hand of the Father in heaven. Lord, I confess. I need a change in my life. Lord, I'm asking you, Lord God, to come into my life. I'm asking you, Lord God, to take anything and everything that's not of your godly will out of this body, out of this mind. Lord, help us to start walking in the light and out of the dark. Lord, we believe and confess we are sinners. And now you live. Asking you, Lord God, to live in us. Asking you, Lord God, Help us walk the walk. Let us, Lord God, get strong in your word, be on a strong foundation, and that is your word. That, Lord, not a day go by or morning 